Hi, I'm James Cathrall, co-founder of Cathrall Audio. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to build the correct layouts in layout mode. So, layout mode is one of the many great features of MainStage. It allows you to design and build your own custom workspace with as many or as few items as you need in it. That way, you're not stuck with some predetermined interface that has a whole bunch of controls that you never use and just clutters everything up. You can have a super clean and efficient workspace. MainStage does come with some layout templates, but those are just Apple's guesses at what might be the most common uses of MainStage and a convenient layout to get them started quickly. For the most part, those aren't very useful. You'll most often wanna start from scratch and build your own layouts. It's really important to take the time to create the correct layout for what you'll need when you're performing. Especially if you like to use perform mode in main stage, which takes up the entire screen. If your layout isn't built correctly, then you'll constantly be switching between edit mode and perform mode to make adjustments. But if done properly, then you can just stay in perform mode and not worry about anything while you're in the middle of your performance. When creating a layout, there are two major things you'll need to keep in mind. One is to add all of the hardware elements that you'll need while performing. This includes the obvious things like your MIDI controller, but also all of your pedals, your pitch bend and mod wheel, and any faders, buttons, or drum pads that you'll need. Without those, you won't be able to properly assign the hardware elements in your concert. Second is adding all the elements to keep track of software functions inside of MainStage. This is a much broader topic and will vary greatly depending on how you utilize MainStage. This includes things like a patch and set list, a CPU meter, level meters, and any parameters that you wanna keep track of during a performance, like maybe what number patch you're currently on or patch specific notes that you wanna keep in mind during a performance. Now, with that said, let's look in MainStage and get started on building your layout. So here's our layout mode inside of MainStage. You can get here by looking up here in the top left. We have our three main modes, layout, edit, and perform mode. Now here in the middle is what's called our workspace. This is what we're gonna populate with all of the different controls that we wanna use. And down here at the bottom is where we can drag them in. Now there are two main controls in main stage. First are our panel controls. These are all two dimensional things that we can bring into our workspace. And then we have shelf controls, which these are more three dimensional items that are put on what's kind of referred to as a virtual shelf inside of main stage. Now I'm gonna go through just building a pretty basic layout with a few key items that'll probably be the most common that everyone's gonna use inside of main stage. First thing I wanna do is bring a keyboard. So here in shelf controls, I can see my keyboard. I'm just gonna click and drag that into my workspace. And now we can see we have a keyboard. There's a few things to see here. These two white bars represent our shelf and this keyboard is resting on that. I can grab this bottom line and pull it up and down to change how that keyboard is laid out vertically, or I can grab this back bar and pull it up and down to move the entire shelf itself. And then we have the keyboard here in the middle. We can see it has a blue border around it. That means that we have the keyboard selected and these little squares are used to be able to resize the keyboard. So I can drag it in and out to make it smaller or larger. And then if I wanna move it on the shelf, I can just pull side to side, I can pull forward and back and place that wherever I want. Now let's look over here on the left side to our screen control inspector. This is gonna give us a little bit more information about whatever item we have highlighted currently in our workspace. So starting from top to bottom, we have our assign button. This is how we can assign our hardware controller to this controller inside of our main stage workspace. If I push that, and then I can start pushing keys on my keyboard, and I can see they start moving. And then I'm gonna unclick assign, that way I'm done assigning. So I'm not gonna go too deep into assigning hardware inside of MainStage. I'm just gonna keep it pretty broad for this video. We already did a video previously where we go pretty deep into assigning hardware in MainStage and you can check that out up here. So now that we have our keyboard assigned, let's just quickly go over some of these other parameters. Right here we have the velocity sensitivity. That's gonna change how much MainStage reacts to the velocity from your keyboard. You can pull it to the left or the right to make it less or more or I can push option and click on that slider to bring it back to its default state. And all of these things from settings down isn't gonna change how your hardware is actually treated inside of MainStage. It's just gonna change how it's visually laid out in your workspace. So here I can change the name. Typically I'll call it something like Synth1. 
And this is what you're gonna label that keyboard as when you're trying to change MIDI inputs inside of MainStage. Next, we can change the number of keys right here by clicking down on this arrow or clicking up here, or I can click and drag up and down the number in the middle, or I can double click and type the number of keys that I want and then hit enter. Next, we have the lowest key. So that's gonna be the lowest key that's shown in the workspace. Do the same thing, drag it up and down here, push buttons up and down here. I can double click and type in a key, or I can also just push learn right here and then push the bottom key on my physical keyboard and then it'll sign it just like that. And then the last part is the layer display. That's gonna be how many layers are gonna be displayed on the keyboard as you're stacking different layers in a patch. So I can just turn that off completely by unchecking this. You can also change the height up and down to either take up more space or less space in this area. And then the rest of these shelf controls are just other hardware items that we can bring in. So something like a mod wheel or a sustain pedal. And I can bring them all onto the same shelf or I can bring in a new one and have a separate shelf. So now this is living on a different 3D shelf inside of my workspace. I'm just gonna delete that one for now. And now let's move on to panel controls. You go over here, we have a few more items that we can look at here. Usually the next one I like to bring in is the selector over here. This is gonna be our patch list and our set list. I'm gonna drag that right there and I'm gonna resize it and make it a bit bigger. We can see that it's just kind of stretching everything out and making it hard to read. So let's work on fixing that. You can go over here to the inspector on the left side. You can start from the top where it says patches and sets. I can click on this. So now it will only show me patches or I can turn this back on and it's gonna show me patches and sets. And then we have dual column display or I can uncheck that and then it's just gonna show everything in one single column. And then we can go over here where it says items to display. Right now it's set to five. I'm gonna change that to 15. And there we go, that's a little bit more legible. Next, we have the color. This is gonna be the color of the currently highlighted set or patch. We can go down this list and change it to a whole wide array of colors. You can click default, which will just change it back to yellow, or you can click customize and customize your own colors by dragging it around on this color wheel. And then we have set and patch justification. So this is gonna change where those are laid out in that patch list. You can do left justified, center, or right justified for each of those. And the other cool thing about building main stage layouts is it does also give you the ability to customize it a little bit and give it its own look and its own aesthetic. So let's see what we can do with this one. I have my patch list highlighted. I'm gonna right click it. And then we have this option here that says group. I'm gonna click on that. You can use that to either group multiple things together. Like if you have a bunch of buttons, you can group them together and then you can just move it as one unit instead of having to move a bunch of separate buttons or a bunch of separate drum pads. The other thing that's cool about it is it automatically gives that item its own backdrop. So we can see here, now this patch list has this backdrop. It's kind of hard to see because the default is black, but I can click on that and then go over here. So now we have panels and I can click on this drop down menu. And these are all preset panels that are provided by MainStage with all kinds of different designs and colors. Or you can upload your own image right here and select from your desktop or your, or your documents or wherever you want. And then you can stretch that to fit if you want to. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with panels. So I can do this one and I can click yellow. You can see now it gives it a nice yellow border. I usually like this one down here on the bottom right. I think he gives it a nice clean aesthetic. Now let's check out what I think is one of the best ones in layout mode. And that's the parameter text right here. This is a super powerful item in layout mode that's highly customizable. So I can click and drag this in. And we can see as I drag this in, now I have a few items in my layout and we can see these white lines that start to appear. This is main stage helping me clean up my layout and have everything lined up. So now I have that lined up there and then I'm gonna click and drag this box and make it a little bit bigger. And then the thing I usually like to do with these parameter texts is go down here to display and then click value. So now all it's gonna do is show me the value and not show me the name of the parameter. Also gonna right click that, give it a group, and then give it that same panel so it all matches. I'm gonna go back to my parameter text. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is it has show frame around text. I'm gonna uncheck that so it gets rid of that sort of ugly black border around it. And now we just have the parameter text and then we have this clean border on the outside. So there's a lot of things you can do with a parameter text. It can basically show you anything that you want inside of main stage. 
So I'm gonna hop over to edit mode. I'm gonna show you one of the ones that I like to use most often. So if I go here to edit, I'm gonna go here to the concert level and assign this at a concert level, clicking this parameter text, and then I'm gonna go down here to actions. So these are all different things that I can assign to this parameter text to be displayed, or I can do any of these other things here as well. If I wanna click on some of these and see what I can have displayed. But for this one, I'm gonna go to actions, and then I'm gonna go down to current patch. And now when I click on a patch, it's gonna show me the name of that patch. So that way when I'm in perform mode, I have a really large display of what patch I'm on, so it's really hard to miss. So parameter text is a great one to explore on your own because there's almost limitless amounts of things that you can assign to a parameter text and it's highly variable so that when you're going through patches, it'll change as you're going through different patches. Now let's just check out some of these other panel controls really quickly. You have smart controls right here. So that's a main stage and logic sort of specific thing that they've developed where you can bring that in and it'll have a few different knobs that are specific to a certain plugin that you have highlighted. Next is the MIDI activity. This is sort of like a space saving version of a keyboard. So you can assign this to a MIDI port just like you did with the keyboard. And every time you press a key, then that MIDI activity is gonna highlight. So I can go over to edit mode and you'll see that it'll turn yellow every time there's MIDI activity going on in my concert. And then outside of that are pretty straightforward hardware type of items. There's directional knobs and faders for things that you might have on your MIDI controller or any other type of hardware that you're using. And then there's buttons and drum pads as well. So those are gonna be really important when you have those on your MIDI controller. If you're using any type of drum pads or you do have faders that you use and assign in your concert, you're gonna to need to bring those in layout mode and then assign them in edit mode. Let's check out another important one. So this one isn't really necessarily hardware related, but it's these vertical meters and horizontal meters. Or you can also use a VU meter if you like, but I like using the vertical meters. So I'll drag this one in right here. I'm gonna resize it to make it a bit smaller. Drag that up there. Let's uh, line it up like that. And now once I have that in here, I'm gonna get rid of this parameter value and just have it show nothing. I'm gonna go over here to edit mode. And now we can assign this. So if I go to main stage layouts, click here, and then let's go to output one, two, and then level. So now whenever I'm making sounds, it's gonna show me a level meter right there. So through the power of editing, I just quickly put a piano together. And then if I push buttons here, you'll see now I can see the levels right there in my workspace. But when I'm in perform mode, I can also see those levels and it makes it really easy to tell if I'm clipping. So if it does get loud enough, it's gonna show you that it's clipping at the very top, it's gonna to start to turn red. So that's a really nice one to be able to keep your eye on while you're performing. There's also a couple of great features in layout. If you're a more OCD type of person, kind of like I am, where you really want everything in your workspace to be nice and clean and aligned and, and really perfect. All right, so let's start by dragging in some buttons. I'm gonna drag in this first one right here. I'm gonna go over to display and do nothing just to make that a little bit cleaner. And I'm gonna make this a bit smaller as well. And now to bring in some more buttons, instead of just clicking and dragging over and over again, I can hold option and drag the button I already have. And now I have a second one, or I can push command D for duplicate and create a couple more. And now it kind of laid them out all diagonally, but I want them in a straight line. So now I'm gonna drag, highlight all of them, right click, and I have some options to align them. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do a line top. And look at that, now they're all in a straight line, makes it really easy. And then I can drag all of these all at once over here and then line them up in the center of my workspace. So that just makes it really convenient and really quick to make your workspace clean and not have to click and drag a bunch of stuff all over the place and spend a bunch of time making it perfect. You can just use those align functions and make it really easy. So that's the layout mode inside of MainStage. I think it's well worth it to really get familiar with this whole area and make sure that you're building a good workspace that's gonna have everything you need inside of it. And your future self will thank you when you're in the middle of performances and you have everything you need inside of that workspace. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to press that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.